Ta-da, that's one of my favorite Jay Ricochet tunes. Is there any Jay Ricochet tune that isn't your favorite? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I'm Hello, sorry. Jay. <laughs> What's going on out there in Chatland, all you radio now rascals? Look, look who is in the chat room. It's Nickers. Nickers wants to know when Carol Plunk is coming on. Nick Deitch. She will be on very, very soon. Randy's going to load up some of the tunes. And we have a new tune by Erica. Erica Thingamy Bob. What's Who? her last name? Hi, Erica. Erica, yes, Erica. Erica. Fultz. Is it Fultz? Oh. Fultz. That's the one. Erica K. Fultz. Yes, she is. She sounds cool too. Yeah, Love yeah. It. So we've got a new tune by her to play. Uh, That's next, by the Carol way. Carol Plum joining us at the top of the hour. No, it's and not next. What? Her song. Well. But we'll move it up the list. <laughs> Now you're talking. As soon as I figure out what I did with it. Keep yakking. You're good at that. <laughs> I know. I could talk crap for England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, and America put together. No doubt. Keeping the pond busy. Jake the Beardo Weirdo in the chat room says he can't. He's driving. His wife, his wife is typing for him. What is he talking about? 83. He says that he's doing a thing on his show like in 80s and 90s. And I said, were you even born then? Because he kind of looks very young, but with an old beard. I see that. <laughs> so I was, you know, wondered, was he born in the 80s or the Mr. Rollins Sr., my friend. Yes, How Thomas. Are you? Thomas is there. He has a request, and he would like to hear Good Time by Alan Jackson. He would? Yes, well, he Well, what then? We could do that. What else is going on? Who else is out there in chat land? Absolutely no. What do the radio Ren rascals do we I have? bet Brenda the Blender's listening. She's always listening somewhere. Nice to see Knickers. Yes, At least you're still yes. alive, dude. Knickers has come to hear Carol Plunk. Plunk. He has. We can do that, of course. What did Thomas want to hear? Alan Jackson. Thomas something. wants, uh, he would like to hear, I wish he'd pay attention. He wants to hear Good Time by Alan Jackson. Hmm, okay. Might be something I don't have handy, but we will take care of that. Don't we shall you sort fret it. None. Yes. Don't you worry your pretty little face, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> we, will, <laughs> we will sort it. And, oh, also, I want to tell you guys that uh, the Yankee and the Brit will finally be making a video to a song that we did absolutely donkeys years ago. So we're going to make right? a video, and it's going to be a tough one for don't us. Don't say so it, though. Don't say it in I'm case, not gonna tell him. In case gonna Mama tell him. Susie's listening. Oh, no, yeah. Don't exactly. want to give it away. What if Mama Susie's listening? I told listening? her I refused to tell her what it was, because <laughs> I know she'll know it. I'm not going to tell you guys either. Um, it's going to be a tough one, so even if you don't like it, just pretend you like it, see? It's that easy. Oh, Knickers, we love you too, lad. Yes, yes, we love you. If only you were just so bad that you happened to be on the wrong side of the lake. And uh, and I've told Knickers in the chat room, I've given him strict instructions that he has to give Danny Deitch the wet willy from <laughs> oh, us. And I said, blame it on Randy. And when, Ron. when the last time his ears were, when was the last time his willy was cleaned out? <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be Knickers, Knickers willy, not Danny's. <laughs> I thought that was the finger in the ear. Yeah, but uh, I told him to actually give him a wet willy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right in the old ear hole. You know, dip it, in, dip it in some syrup. You know what the wife and... says, any old's a gold. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say hello to Mama Susie if she's listening to Mama Susie, what a wonderful lady, and oh, can she cook. <gasps> Woo! <laughs> I bought a banana bread cake from her today oh my goodness goodness it's too bad you guys don't live close go down there and stuff yourself full of goodies and i can't my, remember my, what my. that thing was that uh, that i bought for me but um yeah it's great dip, how was it after dip, you dunked it in your coffee oh it's just amazing it reminded me of something that i used to eat in the uk and i can't remember what but it was something that i used to dip in my tea you actually found something over here that's as good as home? That's something that's edible, yeah. And it doesn't yeah. have beans on it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, anyways, Friday night, Carol Plunk joining us here in just a little bit. She's kind of a rocker, I think, right? But country, is that I have what I'm getting? I have no idea. Yeah, she kind of comes across, the music kind of comes across as a bit of rock. In fact, I says to her the other day in the Facebook chat, I said, do you compare, has anybody compared you to anybody? Because... Because you remind me of someone and I can't remember who. And then um, and then it dawned on me. Remember Jodie Herman that used to come in the chat years and years right. ago? Right. Well, she used to always have us play a song called Shitlist by L7. And her voice reminds me of 
whoever it is that sings in L7. Well, there you go. Yeah. You might hear it too, but she also said Sheryl Crow, and I hear a bit of Sheryl Crow in there too, and I also hear a little bit of someone else every now and again. I remember you mentioning Sheryl Crow. So, yeah, we were working the other night, weren't we, and we was chattering about how her voice sounds. I know, I was just looking at Jake's, where he says, I can't my driving, my wife is typing for me. <laughs> Maybe you'd be better off typing while you're driving, because your wife oh. can't spell. <laughs> Do you have to be so awful? <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't like people, no. <laughs> hey, now there's nothing as rude as that woman today that was driving with her head in the phone. Which one was that? Exactly, which Number one? Number five exactly. or six? Which one? <laughs> the one that just Don't even start right me on it, Ethel. the highway and just texting away and not even taking any notice of the road. Don't even get me started. Yes, and let's get started on the one that just pulled out right in front of all three lanes just to take the slip road off and then decided wrong slip road and I then he came back on. I wish she would have slipped off the road. <laughs> Anyways, let's move along over here. Erica K. Fultz, Walking After Midnight. You're going to love this man right here with the Yank Eye and the Britsky. More music! Push it back! Bo Hazard starting tonight with the Yankee and the Brit in the RTM Radio Network over here on Friday night. Got a request for Thomas coming up. Let's say hello to Erica. She's in the chat room. We've just played your song. You just missed it just by a few minutes. Oh, she is then. She, she is. Look. Hello, Erica K. Fultz. There she is. Hello, my love. How are you? What's Good going evening. on? Good evening. Great tune, by the way. Awesome. Isn't yeah. it? Oh, yeah. Oh, I loved it. Are you kidding me? It sounded great. We can play it again here after I play Thomas's request. I, don't I think care. we should. What do you reckon? I think it's well. What do you reckon, it. husband? I reckon so, darling. I sure do. How are you, Erica? Anything new and exciting going on out there in music land? Anything we should know? Give us the gossip. Tell us what's going on. <laughs> I know. We're sat here like bums on chairs five minutes before the show and uh, <laughs> I'm such a nosy old <laughs> unorganized. I'm such a nosy old blighter. I know you are. What's going on? What happened to Nick? Where's Nick? Why is he hiding? Nickers is waiting for Carol Plunk. Carol oh, Plunk see. is joining us at the top of the hour. We're going to be interviewing her, finding out all about the lady behind yeah, the good right. music. Yeah, that's right. So let's get Thomas's request on here. We'll play Erica's tune again, and then we'll I'll hit a couple of... Uh, walking. I'm going to hit you. Shut up, devil. <laughs> I'm trying to... Ugh. What are you trying to do? Are you Erica, if again? you're not married, don't. <laughs> if you are, good luck. Anyways, um... Yeah, here. We'll do Thomas, we'll play Erica's tune. Then we'll play some Carol Plunk music, which is what I was trying to say. Sounds now that like you've a plan, Sam. So rudely uninterrupted me. Moving right along. You're listening to the Yank Eye and the Brit on the RTM Radio Network. Check it out. I, I was over here with Mama over here. We was just scooting around the floor. <laughs> I just wondered who you were trying to slow dance with. It was uh, the Invisible Donna. Going walking. I was singing in your ear, too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm glad. I wish I could do that. <laughs> that she does. Or that you do, for that matter. Thank you, Erica. Very nice tune, man. I was glad to play it again. Pretty good stuff. Man, you sound wicked. That's a pretty powerful voice you got there, girl. Yeah. Not it's too got bad. some pipes on you over there, love. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I couldn't see your pipe, so I couldn't tell you. Very I was, cool. I was just mentioning to Bob in the chat room that we're gonna be making a video for a song that we did absolutely ages ago. Um, we're gonna don't, try don't, and get say, it. don't say what it I'm is. I'm not gonna tell them what it is, right. but I'm gonna we're gonna try and get it done this weekend. Bit of Yankee and the Brit fun and games and antics. But um, as I was mentioning to Bob in the chat room, that I'm itching for us all to have another group song that we can all get together and have fun with. Yeah, um, hello Bob, by the way. Because we did the uh, Red Solo Cup and the Man of Constant Sorrow, and we had such a great time with you guys. You guys are a bunch of nutters. Have you got Erica lined up on the show at all anywhere, or is this just happening? Oh, no, no, we have not got her lined up. So this is real fresh music. This is like yeah. fresh off the conveyor belt. Or not conveyor belt. <laughs> No, no, not conveyor belts. Independents don't do conveyor belt stuff. No. Um, <laughs> no. She is How about the assembly line? Would that make more assembly sense? Assembly. No, that's just like a conveyor belt. That's a cookie cutter I thing, was, no. Yeah, I was trying to think of... Well, that is a cover song, no. Come on. She Fine is fresh in, in the Yankee and the Brit Show studios. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. All right, we 
got to move along there. <laughs> yes. So we yeah, so if you guys can think of a song that you guys would like to join in and have some fun with us and make join in the video and sing along with us, uh, then uh, inbox me on Facebook. Don't post it on here. Keep it a bit of a secret until we know what we're doing. We got quite a few great comments on the Solo Cup one. Yeah, absolutely everybody loved the Red Solo Cup and the Man of Constant. And, oh, we better mention oh, quick too what happened oh. today. What happened today? Well, the Red Solo Cups. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. Why am I such a club? We stopped at this cool little bakery. This place is the size of a, a motorcycle trailer. <laughs> Packed full of cooking goodies, man. But we went in, and Loads we met this lady goodies. last week, and she called us today and said, Stop by, I got something for you. We went over there, and she had watched the, the Red Solo Cup <laughs> video. We get over there, and she's got us cupcakes in two red solo cups <laughs> wrapped in full in uh clear wrap with a little bow around yeah, the top so to speak the top. <laughs> yeah so cool. she put us she put us a cake in a red solo cup yeah I just thought it was because so she cool. watched the video so i thought that was pretty slick yeah, yeah. thank yeah, you mama. So you never know who is watching very good stuff <laughs> very good lady too very nice yes yes lovely lady all right let's hit up some carol plunk over here before she shows up and i won't even know what's going on yankee and the bread country Friday night. I was going to say Saturday. What day is it? It is not Saturday. All right. Anyways, it's Friday. So Carol Plunk and she's joining us at the top of the hour. Here's Carol Plunk, a piece of me. <laughs> How's that sound? No more pretending Carol Plunk. What a great little tune, man. Sitting here just relaxing and enjoying it. Gotta love that. On the telephone, we have the wonderful Carol Plunk. Hello, Carol. Hi, guys. How are you? Wonderful. Good evening. What's going on? Uh, just enjoying life. It's wonderful. Is that legal? Well, sometimes. <laughs> just don't tell anybody about it. Depends <laughs> on what planet you live on, I guess. Where are you? In Tennessee. Really? Yes. Okay. So right outside of Nashville. Now, tell us where you're from, because it's not Tennessee. Well, I actually am from Tennessee. I'm from a very small town outside of Jackson, Tennessee, called Beach Bluff. Oh, never heard of that one. Very small community, a little bitty country town. Uh, Jackson is about midway in between Memphis and Nashville. It's known as the hub city. It's uh, where Carl Perkins is from. Right. Is that 52 that runs through there? 52 does, uh, I believe, go through there. Um, there's actually several different little highways that go through there. And but, 40. Uh, yeah, 40 goes through there, too. Yeah, 40 goes through there. That's, that's the main thoroughway. Been there lots of times. Mm -hmm. um, I don't hear much of an accent. That's why I was curious. Thank you. I'll, I'll take that as a compliment. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with a southern gal having a southern accent? Excuse me, you've all got accents around here. <laughs> That's just where I'm coming you're hearing from. things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, accents are absolutely wonderful. I, I think I've probably just traveled so much, uh, you know, playing music since I was able to play in bars and just travel from city to city to city. I, I guess I, I grew out of the accent a long time ago. Maybe. When did you get started with your music? I actually started playing when I was five. Wow. Uh, my dad, my dad got me started playing guitar and drums, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and I started playing professionally probably by the time I was fifteen or sixteen. Wow! Did you learn to play the guitar on your own? Pretty much. Uh, my dad taught me a few chords, and I just kind of took off from there. I just play by ear. I was just going to ask: Do you read music or do you play by ear? I guess that took care of that question. Yeah, I read music terribly. <laughs> I don't even know what any of that stuff means. Couldn't even begin to tell you. Yeah, I, I actually did go to college for a while and learned how to read music, but it 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 didn't uh, it do me much good. I, my ear was stronger than my ability to read, unfortunately. <laughs> Probably one of those ones that sat around and said, what am I going to need this for? Uh, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, why do I need this? I can just hear it and play it. <laughs> That's why I failed algebra. <laughs> what's, yeah. <laughs> what's your earliest musical memory from when you were young and drooled everywhere? Oh, the <laughs> earliest memory. I remember 
being very, very young and pulling out the pots and pans and wooden spoons and playing them like the drums when my my dad was a musician as well and he would have friends over to the house and uh, they would play bluegrass music actually is what I was brought up on and uh, I would get out the pots and pans and just play away it was that's my earliest earliest memory of of uh, playing pretty much cool and uh, did you do any things at school you know like any concerts and things at school you know, our school that we went to, like I said, it was a very small uh, community. Uh, there was probably 15 to 20 kids in each each class and maybe a couple hundred in the whole school. It was very small. We didn't have any kind of music program. Um, the first time I played out with my own band was actually in my ninth grade uh, talent show at school. They had a talent show, and my band played, and we won first place. We won twenty-five dollars. <laughs> wow! You were rich. You were rich, loaded. We were loaded. It it was fantastic. I remember that just like it was yesterday. Music school back then was uh, to take a ride down the back road and find some old man standing there playing his saxophone on the front porch. That's it. That's it. I've seen lots of that. Believe it or not. Mm-hmm. So, do you have a musical family? My dad was a bluegrass musician, um, never famous or anything like that. He just played because he loved to play. He actually didn't start uh, learning to play the guitar until he was well into his 30s. And I didn't learn that until after he had already passed. Um, and uh, he had played for his entire life, you know, once he started. Uh, my grandmother on my mother's side uh, played harmonica. And my grandfather on my dad's side was a harmonica player as well. Who who was the other one that played harmonica? Uh, my grandfather on my dad's side and my grandmother on my mother's side. Your grandmother played harmonica. Mm-hmm. How cool is that? Oh, it was fantastic growing up in a in a musical family. There was every weekend there was you know, some sort of little music gathering that we either went to or had at the house. Did mama sing or anything? Oh, no, very terribly. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she wasn't mentioned. Yes. <laughs> I always thought, you know, from from down in the south, you know, mama, mama sang bass and papa played fiddle. Oh. <laughs> Terrible husband, terrible. I know it, but can't help it. <laughs> so, you're, so you're an independent, are you? Yes, I am. Is that your intention to stay as, or do you want to be famous and rich and loaded you with know, $25? Uh, $25, as long as I've got $25 in my pocket, I'm happy. You know, as long as you that's can get the bills title. paid. You know, that's, it is, you know, just being happy with what you're doing and being able to do what you love, that's all that matters. I've never had any intention of, of, being mainstream, making it big, making millions, or you know anything of that nature. I just want to play music and just be myself. And and if there's people out there that enjoy what they're listening to, that's fantastic. I I love that. I take it you uh, is this all you do, or do you have a day job? This is all that I am currently doing. That and I have a three year old now, so. Uh, being a full-time stay-at-home mom and musician on the side right now. How do you manage to pull that off? Oh, it's quite complicated, but you figure it out. <laughs> I guess. Wow. So where where do you record? The sound is fantastic. I actually have a studio in my home. Wow. Now, who's doing so the I, production? Uh, that would be me. Well, my, 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 congratulations. You really got it nailed. <laughs> I'm doing everything on my own, pretty much. See, you don't need to read music. So who do you have for a band? I've got uh, a couple local guys uh, from Jackson, Tennessee, where I grew up, that I, I've played with for you know several years that uh, will back me up whenever I have band shows. Otherwise, I'm doing solo acoustic gigs. Well, sounds pretty good. Well, don't forget, let's mention their names, because without them, you wouldn't be all together there. 
Oh, absolutely. So uh, I've, I've ran through a couple different different drummers. Uh, Jason Edwards was um, my drummer for a very long time, and unfortunately, he did pass a few years ago. Um, previous to that, uh, Sid Barton was a drummer that I had, and he's also going to be a future drummer as well uh, for you know upcoming larger gigs where a band is needed. And uh, Mr. Tony Blackburn on bass guitar as well. Very cool. What kind? What uh, genre of music are you uh, more or less associated with? Hmm. I would probably say Americana acoustic rock. Yeah, I hear kind of I, a crossover between a couple different. I mean, from what I've heard, you know, it could fit in a number of different places, really. Right. It's been very hard for me to kind of, you know, pinpoint exactly where do I fit in. Well, you kind of will create your own niche, won't you? Yeah, hopefully so. I think I can probably fit into several different categories. You know, whenever I'm, you know, doing shows out live, I, you know, in addition to the originals that I play, I also do a, a wide variety of cover tunes as well. And I also try to play a wide variety so that I can target every person that's in the audience, whether they're, you know, in their teens, 20s, or in their 50s, 60s, 70s. I, I try and play something from... A very broad spectrum. What? what? Uh, I'm sorry. Since you're, uh, I know you mentioned your family as being some, you know, some influences. But who outside of that, uh, music-wise, influenced you? Yes. Is there, <laughs> is there anything that's happened in your life or any kind of influences that's give you a bit of a direction? Absolutely. My very first concert was December 5th, 1985 at the Mid-South Coliseum. Tickets were $12.75. My first concert was Motley Crue on really? the Theater of Pain. Yes. Wow. You opened for them? I did not open for them. That is has been my lifelong favorite band up to even now. I, I listen to them all all the time so they have been a tremendous flu influence in my wow. life even though i sound nothing like them <laughs> i can't imagine what you would sound like if you did <laughs> yes I, I i was an 80s baby you know growing up listening to all of the hair bands bon jovi motley Crue, skid row rat you name it you know if it was in that era i probably got got the album i know them all too well mm -hmm. and before so, that time even yeah, so that that's what I listen to on a regular basis. Even now, is is still all of the, uh, you know, great music from the you know early '80s, even into the '90s. Do you do your own backup singing? Yes, I do. Wow, you really do do it all. She's, I do. She's like Bert on uh, Mary Poppins, like the one man band. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. So you got cymbals strapped to your knees like a wind up monkey, then, huh? And a big bass I drum know. on your back. <laughs> 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 well, isn't that interesting? So, so living in Tennessee, um, have you ever been starstruck? Kill it, kill it. Hmm. I'm thinking. Let's see. I did have breakfast at Chick Fil A with Luke Bryan, and let's see. I was Sorry. in Guitar Center one day buying a guitar, and Keith Urban was in there. <laughs> Wow. Did you feel starstruck or is uh, or did I, not? I tr not so much. I, I thought it was really cool to see them out of their element just in the normal day to day routines, you know, with their family or just going out and buying a new instrument. That was really, really neat to see them without security, just walking around being normal people. You wouldn't think that they would would have, I don't know how to say it, uh, you, you just don't expect that, I guess, to see them being, like, human. No, you don't. And Nashville is, is kind of like a safe place for them, especially the outskirts, uh, you know, Franklin and Nolensville. People are just, you know, out and about walking around all the time. Wow. <laughs> So is there any kind of music that really moves you and makes you want to dance around like a nutcase? Hmm. Probably oh anything on the heavier side, you know, fast, you know, loud drums and loud electric guitars, 
you know, that's that's kind of the the vein of music that I'm really into. Do you listen to the radio at all? And I don't. I, it doesn't matter whether it's internet or regular radio, but I do from time to time. If I, you know, I'm on the road driving, and there's I'm actually in a city where there's a radio signal. I do listen to the radio from from time to time. But I would say that I'm probably listening to my old vinyl <laughs> records most of the time. So do you still uh, when you put on your let's let's just say your favorite upbeat tune comes on? Do you like? still bop around the house and dance a little bit and sing along and oh absolutely yeah. anytime kickstart my heart comes on from motley crew that, <laughs> that gets me <laughs> yeah I can what about to that. Uh, what about your your three-year-old do you think maybe you've influenced your little one or do you think that's not happened as yet oh he absolutely loves music he he's definitely a music baby <laughs> that's cool <laughs> Yeah, it's so much fun. I I never knew that having a little one around the house could be so exhausting, but so fantastic. <laughs> yes, they can be very interesting. Has has he reached the terrible threes? Not quite. <laughs> so I'm hoping he skips over that. I think I heard a warning in your voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's coming at any moment, but we're keeping our fingers crossed. Well, it's called the terrible twos where I come from, so maybe you've actually skipped the bad session, you know. I know. I, I'm I'm afraid the three nature is coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna hurt. So you, do you, go ahead. Do you have any heroes? Ah, see musical influences, heroes, people in the genre of which I'm playing. I really enjoy the storytelling and writing of Melissa Etheridge. I think she's a fantastic songwriter, and that's someone that I enjoy to go see live. Um, even though it's it's not that '80s, you know, hard rock. It's definitely more on the mellow side compared to that, but there's something about the energy that she possesses in her playing that's exhilarating. What about Alanis? Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I went to see her on her Jagged Little Pill tour and could barely hear her of all the screaming in the audience. I don't think <laughs> I've been to a concert where there was that much screaming for someone, but... I didn't oh, think yeah, there was it's... anything louder than her. Oh yeah, it was. <laughs> oh, you get a bunch of teenagers in there screaming. It's you'd be amazed at how loud the audience can scream over a powerful artist like that. But oh my God, yeah, she's amazing as well. Don't you ever wonder how they could possibly be enjoying the music? I know. You wonder that, but I do remember being, you know, 15, 16, 17, going to concerts and just screaming and yelling my lungs out. But I still remember what it felt like to be in that presence. What is it about you girls that got to do the screaming thing? I never, me and my buddies could yeah. never quite put that together. Like, I what are they never, screaming about? I could never understand it either. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, now I just want to sit there, be quiet, and just soak it all in. Yeah, exactly. Well, I even did that. You know, we, when I was young, you know, in the late 70s, we went to a heart concert, and it's like, you know, will you people shut up? I want to watch them play. I want to hear the music, you know. And it's just, right. You know, you know, all you girls were screaming again. <laughs> I could never understand it. As you get older, you, you're you there for more than just the experience. You, you actually want to take it all in and actually hear the music. Well, I like to watch people play. There's nothing to me that's more cool than uh, sitting in the studio watching the music be made, the chords bent. I mean, the strings mm -hmm. bent, the drums hit, the expression on somebody's face while they're playing. I mean, all that comes together for me. It always has. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. The music has so many different layers uh, to it. You know, all the things that go into it. You know, some people just hear the final product and never get to experience what actually uh, happens to create that sound. And it's, it's really an incredible process. What goes through your mind when you're when you're on stage and and really into your tune you're doing because everybody's you know the the mood of the crowd has got you like really way deep into the music so you're giving it all you got 
what goes through your mind? I mean, are you do you spend your time trying to remember the lyrics, or, or are you just letting it happen? What what actually goes on? Just let it happen and just enjoy the moment. And I know those moments where the crowd is really into it, you're just there with them, hoping that they are having the time of their life and that you're making some sort of impact you know, on them and in their lives with the talent that you've been gifted with. Yeah, I can't, you know, I, I couldn't get on a stage for anything. I can sit here and yak all day behind a mic, but to get on the stage <laughs> is just no possible way. I couldn't even do a speech or read a essay in front of the class in school, but you know, I couldn't imagine what it's like to stand up there. What could possibly go through your mind while you're doing all that? I mean, so much going on around you. You know, it's very strange. I'm, I'm a very quiet reserved person but if you put me on a stage with a guitar in my hand it's almost like I turn into a different person so you you, some people will have a completely different persona on stage than they do in their you know average day-to-day walk of life oh yeah that I know I've met a number of people when I lived outside of Nashville um Shania Twain was playing in a bar before she got famous um uh, uh, geez, what the hell is his name now? Geez, it's been so long. Uh, anyways, he was, uh, he played golf at a golf course not far from where my girlfriend at the time worked, and he'd come in the store and get his gas for his car and things, and he was just the nicest guy, you know, but when he'd sing, boy, could he belt out a tune. I wish I could mm-hmm. remember his damn name now. <laughs> I feel like an idiot. I can't think of him. He's so famous. It's not funny. You look like one, too. Oh, yeah. Shut <laughs> up over there. Sorry, I just had to get that Bloody one in. Bloody Brit. <laughs> I'm being too well-behaved over here. Have you ever been to England? I have not. That is on my bucket list. Is your music played over there? Not to my knowledge. I would love to uh, figure out how to, to get some overseas exposure for the music. That would be fantastic. Well, when I said you, you, you know, you sound a lot like... Um, the Cheryl Crow and the L7, they play a lot of that over there. They play a lot of your kind of music over there, so you'd probably be all right. And uh, ah. we do have in the chat uh, a friend of Donna's. He does live in England. He's listening, and he's uh, he's all about your music, too. So you do have one follower in England, if anything. And Bob Kennedy, another uh, great artist that's uh, in the chat, he said Vince Gill. Yes, that's who I was trying to think of was Vince oh, Gill. Oh, yes, Vince I'm glad Gill. somebody else knows who you met. Uh, you probably heard me <laughs> mention it before because I talk about it every once in a while. And he can remember better than I can. So what do you like to do to relax when you're not jamming and looking after your little bambino? Yeah, any hobbies? I love scuba diving. Really? Yes, I am a scuba diver. Anything with the ocean, put me on a beach under a palm tree or give me a bottle of wine and I am happy as can be. <laughs> have you ever heard of or thought about, I'm sure you've heard of it if you love diving that much, have you ever thought about uh, like the places in Mexico that are in the caves with the deep bottomless uh, diving places that people go? That is also on my list of things that I want to do and places I want to go. have not been there yet. Uh, but it is uh, definitely something that I've researched. I mean, I've seen, you know, videos, of course, and things like that, and the water is so crystal clear. I mean, it's like just oh, I swimming know. in glass, you know. I think it would mm. be a great experience. That water is also very cold as well, 72 degrees. <laughs> well, it's no different than a bath water, a good cool shower in the summertime. <laughs> Ooh, I like my water about 105. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Wow. That'd cook everything if I got in that kind of water. I'm a white boy. I can't do that. (laughs) So what's your hopes and dreams for the future? Hopes and dreams. I'd love to to start writing, um, you know, toward the end of this year and to next and hopefully have some more material to put out in another full length CD, maybe by the end of next year. Do you remember what your first song was about, the first one that you wrote? Hmm. Obviously not. (laughs) I should get people to do homework before they come on in, shouldn't I? Right. (laughs) The very first song I ever wrote, I do not remember, but I do remember one of the earliest songs that I had written uh, was a song called Touched by You. And it's actually a song that 
I released on my very first CD that I released back in 1994. Written from experience? It was not. Uh, strangely enough, I somehow am able to pull from imaginary resources and write songs that I know nothing about. <laughs> And they come out as great stories. I don't know how it happens. Uh, sometimes you feel like you're just a vehicle to for the music and lyrics to flow through to get it down on pen and paper. Have you ever thought about being an actress? I haven't. But that would be a fantastic job. You seem like you have the stature and imagination to uh, really be a good actress. So you were talking earlier about how you, you're kind of reserved and all that. But you when you mm -hmm. get on stage... You know, I would think, you know, being an actress might be the same thing. Get out there, open up, be what you want to be, and then go back home and sit down and take care of the kids. Oh, I know. That would be fantastic. I'd love that. Okay, I'll sign you up. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. I, I will look forward to hearing back from you and my agent. <laughs> Uh-oh, I heard a little accent right there. There is a Tennessee accent right there. there. There's a tinge of it in there for every now and then. Yep, every now and then. I just heard it again. I've got a bit of a wild imagination, so we're. Boy, you, you know, ain't kidding, Woo, baby. <laughs> so if I, if you could, uh, if I was any good at writing, then I could imagine. Yeah, I see where you're coming from with your, with where you get your lyrics from. You know how they just, uh, you just kind of come from some kind of wonderland. Yeah, sometimes they just they just flow through you, and you don't know where they come from, but you're you're grateful to have something written down. Yeah, you're Wonderland, all right. You make me wonder sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm one of these people that's like, hey, I've got a cool idea. Hey, I've got a cool idea. And he's like, another one? <laughs> Can't you go to sleep? Do you ever sleep? <laughs> no, you never sleep. So uh, where, where do we find your music? You can go to carolplunk.com. And I, I've got a fairly new website that I, I just... Uh, put up on the web here recently and it should be fairly updated with uh, future shows and and uh, the most recent music that you can uh, download and purchase CDs from. Is that a recent picture of you that we have in the poster? Yes. Very good. You look like a little rock and roller. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you look like you got it all together. I think it's cool. I get a kick out of talking with you. Yeah. But I was saying, I was saying to her before we went live. I said you kind of have like a bit of a radio voice, you know. She's uh, yeah, you know, she's got she's a great voice. Are you kidding she's me? Very, uh, yeah, yeah, she yeah, sounds I've, great. I've worked as a receptionist and uh, yeah, even in a call center. I've done a lot of uh, telephone work in the past. A call center? Dare we ask what kind? Oh, for insurance. <laughs> oh, all right. I thought maybe it was a one eight hundred number. Did you ever like call people up and say, "Have you had an accident in the last five years?" <laughs> uh, no, we actually called all of the current customers, but you would be amazed at how many angry people there are out there. <laughs> oh, really? I couldn't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Work in a call center and you find out who's angry. <laughs> right. Exactly. I would not recommend it. <laughs> okay, I got a few questions I want to ask you, and then we'll uh, we'll let you go. We got a couple more of your tunes to play yet, too, but you're great to sit and chat with oh thank you so much how about this what is your favorite word my favorite word your favorite word and it can be something that you say regular like oh crap or hallelujah or whatever you know hallelujah. my favorite phrase is probably i don't know <laughs> oh no my son used to say that i think he still does i don't know <laughs> yeah i don't know that's probably my favorite phrase that's my go-to i don't know <laughs> what's your least favorite word i never like hearing no <laughs> me neither but that was 30 years ago that was before you married me <laughs> yeah that's a bad word <laughs> All right, thank you for that uh, interjection, dear. What turns you on? Music. What turns you off? Bad music. What sound, and obviously I can't say this word proper because somebody always says what, but what sound do you love? Uh, 
the sound of a distorted electric guitar. For a minute there, I thought it was going to be the sound of silence. You didn't say anything. Hmm. Also, I love the sound of a soda can opening. Really? Pop a top. Yeah, pop a top. Is that right? Oh, I'll be. Yeah, or the cork on a wine bottle opening. That That's one of my favorites, too. <laughs> you beat me to it, husband. <laughs> I'm more of a wino than you are. <laughs> wino, wino. Not oh, wino, oh, wino. Oh, all right, all right, all right. What sound do you hate? You know, I don't know if there's anything that I hate. Probably if I had to pick something, I would say the sound of vomit. Someone vomiting. Oh. <laughs> well, I've heard that many times. A lot of concerts are good for that. Oh, yeah. What's your favorite drink? Doesn't matter if it's water or alcohol. Red wine. Good choice. What's your... Well, wait, wrong question. What profession other than yours would you like to attempt? Hmm. Obviously not the, insurance clerk. Right. Since you put the bug in my ear, I'm going to say acting. What profession would you not like to do? Insurance. Call center. <laughs> <laughs> I knew she was going to say that. I'm Come psychic. on. I'm a little you bit can do psychic. Better, you can do better than that. We already know that one. <laughs> oh, what would I not want to do? I would not want to... Think Mike be... Rowe now. I'm going to say this from experience because I did internships at record labels and recording studios. I would not want to be the janitor or cleanup person there because... Because you guys, fans, you guys vomit. Fans come in. Oh, they come in and destroy the place. You, you vomit at some of the songs people send. <laughs> <laughs> that they just destroy the place and oh, don't have any respect. And I, not all musicians are like that by any means. But uh, from my experience, it it was not the most pleasant. And it's okay for them to do that. Well, they have the money to do it. Why not? I see. Just like everything else, money talks. Right. All right. Number 10, last one. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you get to the pearly gates? Hmm. Let me think about this one for a second. Five, four, hmm. three. About, okay. <laughs> About time you got it right. <laughs> <laughs> Good. There you go. I'm done with my end of the deal. Okay. Just tells us a little bit more about you. Yes. Yes. All the random stuff that you don't post on Facebook, you get to find it out here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about, speaking of Facebook, what do you think about uh, and do you do any live videos? It is something that I have <laughs> contemplated doing. Um I do post some live stuff or do some uh, live videos from some shows occasionally, not near as much as I should be doing, uh, but it is something that I'm wanting to to get more into just because I think it it shows, you know, your audience a, a more personal side of you and get to know you a little bit better, you know, rather than just hearing the you know, polished product that you can do in the studio. So you do think there's some benefit to it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We get it kind of both ways, actually. It's kind of almost a 50-50 thing from people. You know, some say yes, some say no. Mm -hmm. Speaking of unpolished, what are you going to sing for us live on the Yankee and the Brit show? What am I going to sing live? I don't yeah. know. I bet I, I should probably go grab my guitar and play something, or we can schedule something for me to play a whole show for you. Oh, that's a better Ooh, idea. La, la, la. Yeah, yeah, you could do a whole show live. Never even thought about that. That's a hell of an idea. Yeah. Yeah, sign me up for that. I'd be happy to do that. All right, you're signed up. Okay. No <laughs> contracts either. <laughs> Fantastic. And you don't have to deal with any Nashville producers. Wonderful. Just let me know when you want me to, to start singing and playing for you, and I will. Well, if I had the money, I'd pay you to come here and do a concert. <laughs> That'd be wonderful. Beautiful. What a what a gal, and how nice just chatting with you. You're so nice, like uh, you said, reserved, comfortable, relaxed. You know where you're going and what you're doing. Plans for the future, then, are? 
That's called a three-year-old. A three-year-old determines right. what she's doing and where she's going. Nice. Exactly. I'm just taking it day by day. <laughs> Can't get much simpler than that. Yep, just day by day. So, Enjoy the life that you have and be thankful that you wake up each morning. Are you – you don't play out at all now? I do. Um, I'm actually playing in Memphis, Tennessee next weekend. Uh, so I am uh, doing shows here and there and uh, am looking forward to, you know, adding to my uh, tour list of doing, you know, even more shows as time goes on, You're gonna especially be on the... as the little one gets a little bit older. You're going to be on the same stage as Elvis and B.B. King? Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, <laughs> what I think. That's the place to break it open right there. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else you'd like to add there, Britsky? Yes. Is there anything that you would like to add before we flush you down the Yankee and the Brit Show toilet? Because <laughs> we literally I, do pull that chain. I think you've pretty much got me in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> would that be a walnut or a pecan? Hmm. Let's go with a walnut. Okay. What a beautiful <laughs> piece of wood, too. I love walnut. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right. Very good. Thank you, my dear. Sure do appreciate your time. Well, thank you guys so much. It's been a pleasure speaking with the both of you. And we will try to put something together where you can come on and play live for a little bit. I think that would be an awesome idea. Yeah. Sounds great. Just let me know when, and we'll we'll set it up. We will. We're going to move on with a couple more of your tunes. Savior, moving on. We got those left to go yet. What is Savior about, by the way? Actually, Savior was written about uh, my previous drummer that I had. Um, he was one of my best friends for many, many years, and he had some issues with drugs and alcohol a, a way back, and he had been clean for quite some time and fell off the bad bandwagon and had an accidental overdose, and we lost him a few years back, and that song, it, it uh, just reached out and pretty much wrote itself, and it's that's uh, him in a nutshell. I'm sorry to hear that. What about moving on? Moving on, I actually co-wrote with a, a good friend of mine up in Minneapolis, and um, it was about some uh, past relationships that, that she had had, and I was able to contribute a, a lot of the lyrics and all of the music to that, and it just kind of fell into place. Very good. Well, thank you very much. We'll get on these songs, and we'll get back together with you here when we can. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. Here's Carol Plunk, the savior with the Yankee and the Britain. night. Wow. You hear that guitar? Woo! You go, girl. Boy, that's nice. Yeah, Carol yeah, Plunk. Yeah, them strings. I know. Boy, oh. she's tearing it up. Gotta love it. I had no clue. And I was right. Carol does have a fan in England, Nickers, because he just had a request for a Carol Plunk song, Let It Burn, that I knew nothing about. So we're going to check this out. Yeah, he's go. listening all the way yeah, from sunny Derby. Beautiful. Let's see how this goes. Yankee and the Brit, Friday night, by request from across the pond. Carol Plunk, Let It Burn. <laughs> There she is, Carol Plunk. Let it burn by request for knickers over there across the pond. Wow. What great stuff, man. Thank you, Carol, a million times for coming and hanging out with us. Yeah, and we'll do what uh, we'll do what we suggested. We'll see if we can set some up where she joins us for a show and we can play loads of a uh, Yeah, live if we music. can get the sound right, that's the key to the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, we might have to pre record some of that music. I'm not gonna lie to no. you and pretend it's live, but I might we might have to pre-record some of the music mm -mm. and uh, have We have to do live it live because I want to hear all the girls screaming. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way to have a live concert. Lots of noise. Anyways, yeah, cool. Thanks, Nickers. Good request. Good tunes. Thank you, Carol, again for coming by and hanging out with us. Yeah. Very nice to chit-chat with you. Gal's got it all together, man. Great voice. Good-looking gal. It's all happening. It's all happening right there for you. Okay, let's see then. We've got a request from Nisi. Hello. Excuse me. Hello, Nisi, by the way. How are you? She's still here, right? She is I'm not going to play this song if she's not here she to listen. She came in and she has demanded She has demanded the Yankee and the Brits love shack. I know she has. This it's demanding women thing has got to stop. Does. 
But um, we'll wait and see if she's here. Well, she's eh. still here. Screw it. Let's just play it. Press the bloody button. It's the Yankee and the Brit by request. Love Shack right here on a Friday night. You're listening to the Yankee and the Brit on the RTM radio network. Don't make me say it again. Are you ready, dear? Ready, ready. All right, here we go. If you see a faded sign at the side of the road that says 15 miles to the... Love Shack! Love Shack, yeah, yeah. I'm heading down the Atlanta highway. Let me go in love, get away. Headed for love, yeah. I've got me a as big as a whale and we're heading on down to the love shack. I got me a Chrysler and it seats about 20, so come on and bring your jukebox money.
country music, the RTM Radio Network. This here is Grant Daniels with Country Soul. Enjoy. Songs about hugging and kissing, songs about laughing, love that's missing. Play them fast or play them slow, cause I got country in my soul. Love those songs about losing and winning, songs about fate and people grinning. Play those songs right off the chart, cause I've got country in my heart. Guitar, it sounds just right. Fiddles playing hot tonight. Guitar players drumming and picking. Bass and drums keep it all kicking. Clap your hands and stomp the boots. If you have country in your boots, grab your hat and wave it high. You're a country kind of guy. And George Strait are the ones that sound so great. Merle Willie Conway too inspire me to sing for you. Alan Jackson, Johnny Cash, have a lot of country class. Will and Jennings, Jim and Hank are the guys I'd like to thank. Clap your hands and stomp your feet. Stand up, girls, give us a yell. If you're a country kind of gal, steel guitar it sounds just right. Fiddles playing hot tonight. Guitar players drumming and picking. Bass and drums keep it all kicking. Clap your hands and stomp your boots. Now you have country in your roots. Clap your hands, stomp your feet. If you love that country beat, stand up, girls, give us a yell. You're a country kind of gal. Hey, Yankee and the Brit, Friday night with Alfred, sitting in the air chair for a few minutes while Pop is out shaking his leg. How are you, everybody? Nice to see you guys. Hi, Carol. How are you, girl? I just come to say hi. Thought I'd play another cool tune for you guys. Here we go. This is Carol Harnden with the Yankee and the Brit show and me, Sir Alfred. Nice to see you guys. You from the 60s with the sound of that thing. Yankee and the Brit Friday night. Hello, everybody. What's going on? Nice to see you stopping by. Hello, Carol. How are you? And thank you very much, Carol Plunk, for stopping by and hanging out with us for a while. And that Alfred. gal can rock some shit, man. I'm telling you. Yes. Awesome. Yes, she can. Yeah. Hey, thank your little DJ friend, Alfred, for taking over while you were outside. Yeah, he's, he's outside now. He's it's quite turn. the boy. He's out there shaking a leg. <laughs> <laughs> Shaking four legs, actually. But he doesn't forget his faithful follower, does he? No, he does not. He never forgets Carol Durham. He just came in here and shoved me out of the chair. He said, go outside. I said, okay, I'm out. I went outside, and next thing you know, I come in, and Donna says, you don't know what he just did. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> I know. I didn't even know he could do that with those big clodhopper paws. Nick says, what's cracking off? Who's he talking to? I don't you know. just talk to anybody like that, you freak? <laughs> here he is. He's here, Alfred. He's back, look. Hi, Carol. Carol. Carol said he's the boy. How are you, girl? What's going on? Anything good? Probably. I mean, she's alive. That's a plus. She's living in the north again. Hey, well, what? Is it cold up there? Yeah. Frigid, kind of cold like that. Not yet, but it's getting there. You know, I thought when he was watching the weather the other day, it was 50-something in a while. I know. Keith told me it was really cold. I couldn't do that. 
I know you're a Texas yeah, born and raised like dog. Yeah, you're like Randy. You like you don't like that cold. And you don't like the heat. Now. I like it this way. Yeah, I know. Me too. I don't like That's that. That's why he too likes to cold. sit. Would you believe our dog loves to sit on the wake us up in the middle of the night and sit on the porch for about twenty minutes while we're like, you know, matchsticks yeah, in the mom, eyes. Mom. You don't yes. know how hot it gets laying over there. <laughs> I don't care. Bedtime is bedtime. Why do you think I lay on the floor so much? It's too hot on the couch over there. I just I can't take that. Just yeah. like pop. I'm the only hot thing around here. I dog. know. And then I leave the air conditioning on and it blows all over you. And then you're too cold. I know. Then I get on the floor to get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you just have a bed on the floor? Who's got more issues sofa? than you? Uh, probably you. That's beside the point. <laughs> leave no, my personal life no out of it. No one's got more issues than around <clears> you. <throat> all right. I'm going now. I got to go finish shaking my leg. <laughs> you mean you mean you stopped mid-flow to come and say hello to I Carol? I did. I was just pinching off a little one and it just... I heard you talking about me. <laughs> Jeez, Alfred. Do, do you always scream the Deitch word when you pinch one off? I do. How do you do it? I do it like a dog. Like a dog? How yeah. does a dog do a Deitch? <laughs> Just like that, huh? <laughs> it's that easy. <laughs> there you go. Alfred the radio dog. Go and do something. Nice to see you guys. Raise the power to you all. Bye. <laughs> Jeez, get out of here. <laughs> what a knob. <laughs> Maybe that's who Nick was talking to. Yes, yes, what's cracking yeah, off, Yeah, I could have told him what's cracking off over here. A good long day. Alf- Alfred. Alf- Alfred, why don't you tell uh, why don't you tell these people in the chat room the, the things that you see of the Yankee and the Brit? Hey, Mom, I'm way out here in the other room. Well, get back here no, for a second. I told you I'm done. <laughs> Boy, what a snotty little shit. He is. Maybe it's a good thing. I mean, I did ask him to tell tell you guys all our secrets but maybe it's not a good thing i mean he sees randy scratching his ass and all sorts of stuff hey next thing you know he's scratching my ass i mean he's scratching his ass (laughs) 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 oh goodness gracious anyways what's going on everybody got weekend plans doing anything exciting going anywhere doing anything concerts who's going to see carol plunk play in her living room In a living room. Well, she yeah. said she right now she's taking care of her three year old, so she's not out doing a lot of jamming. It's like, okay, we'll go to her house. It sounds like a plan. I'm telling you, I haven't been to Tennessee in a long. Well, yeah, I can't lying. We were at We've Becky and Tim's lying. house. Yes, we were. Not we too did. long we ago, went to so yeah, I was in Tennessee now. What, what last year or this year? Uh, when did we go? This Sorry, year, we went to Rutherford in Tennessee. Was it this year? Yeah, it we was went this to year. Ohio. Yes. Came back. I don't even March. remember when it was. It was March when I had my bad leg, and everybody in the chat room remembers this During year those I was moaning about my leg. In March, wedding bell blues. Oh, yeah. Don't remind me. Dreading that, ain't you? <laughs> four years coming up, baby. It's not four years. It's five years coming up. Five? Five whole years. No. Five years. Five yeah. years with you? Yeah. You're creeping up on seven. You realize that, don't <laughs> you? 16, 17, 18, 19. I gotta 20, dump you pretty soon. I got less than two years to do it. Oh. <laughs> no, it's really four years. I was joking. So, which is it? Five, you had to say, I saw you counting on your fingers. Four years. You didn't even know you either. You didn't even notice me count to 20. It just, <laughs> it just seems like five years, doesn't Twat. it? Yeah, stop it. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. All right, so. That's what's going on over here. I believe he still wants to bone me after four years of marriage. I mean, oh my gosh. It's a lot of work. How does that even happen? It's a lot of work. That's all I can tell you. Okay, let's get back over to the tunage over here because that's what we do. Here's Don Haddock, Matt Slag, and the Tramp Iron Railroad. Step off this track with Yankee and a Brit Friday night and a few extra skeeters buzzing around here. It's the place to be Radio living is the life for me Airwaves spreading out so far and wide Keep your FM, just give me that internet side Online is where I'd rather stay I've got a lot of music to play I just adore a Yankee view Darling, I love you, but give me a show to do the chat. The brats. On air. That's fair. You are my wife. Goodbye, British life. The Yankee and the Brit on air. 
Remember, if for any reason you must leave your radio, please have the man at the door stamp your ear so you can listen again later. Howdy, y'all. This is Steve Hicks, Dick Hickman, saying tune in to Yankee and the Brit for the hottest in independent country music. Saturday nights. Be there. like a jail. I want to bust out and run like hell. Never looking back until I reach those hills. Yeah, the great smoky mountains, the thought of you gives me the chill. I need a tailgate of jars, a river in my guitar. My kids need fed and my bills need paid and I'm working overtime just trying to survive. Yeah, yeah. They call it living the dream even when it costs you your life. Well, I need a tailgate, a jar, the river in my guitar on a bonfire Saturday night. If I don't I can get. I don't give a damn what the boss man says. My truck is all packed. I'll be there in a few. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't drink often, but baby, now when I do. Being as I'm sitting here with the microphone wide open, I might as well repeat it again. <laughs> we are on Central Time, Erica. Uh, yeah, Louisiana time. Same I wasn't street, sure but. if she was in Texas because uh, I think it was today or yesterday. and It might have not even even been her, but I was sure she mentioned being in um, Houston or Austin or something. And, I, and like I say, it might not have even been her. I don't know. <laughs> um. Anyways... Uh, Donna, you and Randy know any we know, rays we know. in Texas? The only rays we know here sun are rays. sun rays. Sun rays, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and if you go down to Galveston, I don't know if there's any stingrays floating around in water down there in the Gulf or not. Erica, you ever see any stingrays down there? I don't know. I, uh, the only rays I know. No, we don't really know anybody here, uh, Grant. No, and we found out, oh, a train horn. Oh, 
listen to that. We finally got to know one of our neighbors, and then we yeah. found out that just passed away. So um. yeah, Donna called today. Haven't heard from the guy. He was our egg man. He was. I made him a sign, so he brought us free eggs. So every week or so, I get to bullshit with the guy. I was getting to know him. Got to like the guy, nice guy, and everything. And uh, then he just disappeared one day. He stopped coming around. And we ran out of eggs, and I was like, man, something ain't right. And his wife stopped and said he was in the hospital. And then, uh, so we, okay, he's in the hospital. You know, and eventually I just got this feeling that he had died, you know. And Donna decided today, that's enough. I got to know what's up with this guy. She called, and his wife says, yep, passed away in July. So the egg man died. So wasn't happy about that. But I don't mean the egg part. I mean the fact that he died. <laughs> yeah, I miss my fresh brown eggs, but that's beside the point. Anyways. But yeah, uh, Erica, we went to uh, went to New Orleans, uh, not last year, the year before, I think it was, and um, and we went past signs for Streetport, which was why I was like, is that is that in Texas? I, I know I saw it on the way somewhere. That was about all I remember. No, it was on the way to Florida and on the way back. Ah. Okay. Are you getting it in your head now? I'm getting it. You know, it in you my have head. Google Maps over there. You can really <laughs> I, look. And I was see. sure we saw it before that, but I might be wrong. <laughs> okay. Erica, I'm so glad you're still hanging out here. Pretty cool. Yes, yes. Very, very She's cool. She's actually had her hands on a stingray. Do they feel velvety? Do they look? Do they feel like they look, or are they just like, you know, slick and smooth like dolphin skin or shark skin? Or <laughs> Grant says that Randy needs a new lighter. <laughs> it's a I do. This one, you know, I've had this for two years. It's one of those... Uh, the uh, bic with the long extension on it for starting a fire in the stove. We've had, I've had this for two winters now and two summers, and I sit here lighting my smokes with it constantly and uh, you know other things. And it's I can't believe it's still going. It's got to die pretty soon. So yeah, I'm due to get a new one. But yeah, you can hear that. It's clicking funny what you guys hear over there. Right I know. Well, this microphone picks up everything if I fart. Everybody. I tell you what. It. Sometimes when I'm uh, when I'm playing back some of the interviews and cutting out all the crap, some of the bits of crap that I actually cut out. Is uh, Randy? He take you actually hear him. Would you believe you hear him opening his cigarette packet? You hear him take a cigarette out, and then you hear him tap his cigarette three times on the table. Okay, the fans off. Can you hear my chair? Yeah, you hear his chair too. That and gets in so many of our recordings. It's not funny. And often he'll decide during an interview that it's a good idea to trim his fingernails. <laughs> That's right. Erica, meet Grant so Daniels. He's another singer. We. Played, we play his music quite a bit. Yes, played we have earlier. some of the best independent artists on our show. I cannot fault it. We played uh, one of our favorite ones, the uh, Country Soul. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's cool, and I've said it before. I like it because people can come in here and chat with the artists, and I think that's pretty cool. I just can't thank you folks enough for coming in and hanging out with us sometimes. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah, I think it's great. For me, that's a nice high. It doesn't cost anything either. <clears throat> so Yet. anyways... Uh, Erica says uh, the uh, stingray feels soft. Is that like your skin? No, I'm like a, more like a bear's arse. No, you got chicken skin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm as rough as a bear's arse. <laughs> uh, you are too much. Did you get 29 mem? What's 29 mem? Is that a disease? Men. 29 men. I love 29 men. 29 men. Did I get that? Um, let me look and see. Grant Daniels, Daniels, 29 men. Is that a song you sent us? No. It's raining men, hallelujah. Hey, by the way, we got about uh, we got, we got nine eight minutes, minutes left. left. Eight minutes left. I know. Eight minutes of torment. What do you say we do something cool? Oh, we what? don't even have anything cool Let's on this show. Let's play Erica's I mean, song again. Sorry, we have loads of cool stuff on this show. Let's play Erica's song one more time. That'd yeah, and you've got to kill the mosquitoes. I got them. <laughs> Did I get you them? didn't kill the mosquitoes. The mosquitoes are crazy in here. That's what I get for leaving a door. I took the screen door down for the winter because it was cold the other night and the thing's starting to fall apart because the rain beat it up. I don't even know how we managed to do a, a, a uh, interview tonight while sp splattering mosquitoes. I'm surprised Carol didn't say something. <laughs> I know. Right in the middle of her talk and all I hear is... Oh, the what about Edmunds Fitzgerald? He was only talking about that. No, last week. what is that one called? I don't know. I... You're talking about to start. No, he told me about that last week. I think he mentioned. Did you that. get Twenty Nine Men? A song called Twenty Nine. Yeah, it's about the Twenty Nine Sailors on the Edmunds Fitzgerald. I remember him telling me that, but no, we did not get that. I don't have it here anywhere. 
for your talents, Fibs. I've got Zone All Your Own, Snowbird, Play Love Song, I Would If I Could, Hiding Place, Dreamland Promises, Country Soul. And I did not get 29 men. No, I did not. Sorry. 29 men. No, sir. Sorry. You didn't send that one. I think you sent everything but that. Grant Anyways. Daniels, as promised, my 29 men. You weren't on the ball, husband. Where it is, is it? right here in the email. When did it come through? On what? the 23rd of September. Well, Might I as well not... drop you in it while we're live. Who did he send it to? He sent it to the Yankee and the British I Gmail. I did not com. see it because you know I would have had it if I did because I would have remembered what it was. It's all right, Grant. We've got it. <laughs> All right, let's get on with this over here, and then we'll come back and say goodbye. Hi, this is Donna from the Yankee and the Brit Show. And I'm Random Man. And we invite you to join us on a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night for some terrible music. And a lot of great, hideous, disgustingly ignorant jokes. Some tragic humor. And the occasional prank call. Find us on Facebook. It's the Yankee and the Brit Show. Please share the page. Here she is, the infamous Erica K. Fultz, walking after midnight with the Yankee and the Brit. Hey friends, this is Erica K. Fultz, and you're hearing Walking After Midnight right here on the Yankee and Brit Show. Oh yeah. I go out walking after midnight, out in the moonlight, just like we used to do, I'm always a walking. Yankee and the Brit, we are out of here, man. Time is up. We are Got gone. to go. Got to go. Got to go. Thank you, everybody. We love you guys. Thanks for tuning in tonight, Erica. Thank you very much for hanging out with us. Love your music. What a cool song. And tomorrow night, Jason Hill is going to be joining us on the show, so you want to make sure you're here for that. That should be pretty cool. And what are we doing Sunday? Are we here Sunday? We have John D. Neal joining us on Sunday night. I guess we'll be here Sunday night for an independent Sunday, nothing but independent music. Only the best music right here on the Yankee of the Brit Show. That's Sign out, right. husband. Yeah, I guess we better. Okay, we gotta go. Thank you, everybody. Why does this thing sound so weird all of a sudden? I don't know. But thanks for stopping. We'll see you tomorrow night. Same time, same, same bat channel. channel. 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. Central Time. See you then.